Hey, what's up? The Brew Dude is back here with another beer or two. Today, we're going to go ahead and mix these two bad boys and make a drink that has been referred to as black and tan or in Ireland a little bit more referred to as half and half. So we have Guinness, Drought, Stout, clocking at about 4.2% alcohol by volume. If you haven't had a Guinness, then I'm not sure what is wrong with you. Not in any negative way, but Guinness has, I mean, if you haven't tasted it, go taste it. It has its own unique flavor, um, it, its own unique properties that are going to make this mix what they are. We also have Harps, which is a Guinness product. Uh, this one's, uh, I believe, 4.5% alcohol by volume, brewed using fine ingredients for crisp refreshing taste so let's go ahead and uh, mix these bad boys there's different ways and people use different type of beers you can use it it's a dark beer and also you can use a a light beer of your your, fl your flavor your choice right uh, a lot of people use that bass bass lager uh, i bought this guinness right next to it was this harps premium lager why not use them both right that Guinness flavor, that Guinness aroma that you like, and that that actual um, uh, that harp harp lager. Now mixing them both is going to be the uh, the idea. How we mix them is we're just not going to pour them. I know a lot of uh, manu beer manufact beer breweries sell the black and tans already pre mixed and pre made, but we're not going to go ahead and do that. We're just not going to dump it. We're actually going to have that separation of black and tan and make that so first what we want to do is we want to get a light beer okay this is the harps lager we're going to go ahead and just pour that at the bottom all right we're going to pour that right there that's about half and then there's different methods to pour the Guinness. They actually sell spoons that you can pour the Guinness. You can fold up your own spoon and, and fold the, and, and pour the Guinness. But all the purpose of the video, not everybody's gonna have the spoon. I'm gonna go ahead and just pour it like I typically pour, typically pour if I don't have a spoon. I'm just gonna tilt the, the glass just a little bit like this. That way I can slow pour the Guinness in. And what we're trying to achieve is we're trying to achieve the separation of beers the beers are density and viscosity and carbonation are completely different so what that helps is it helps keep the beer separated in this case here we're going to try to keep that guinness high above which is the uh, black part of this beer the black and then the other part is the tan but like i said the half and half correlation with with this actual drink so like i said this is if you don't have a spoon or if you don't have a a, a pouring draft system and all this stuff this is just kind of a good way to pour your drink there's also a good way to pour it if you're doing a snake bite or or anything that has to do with uh this here all right so you see that I was successfully able to pour it. If you look at it here, you can actually see the separation of beers. It goes from the dark Guinness, starts all the way coming down, and then it starts getting amber because now it's slowly mixing, and then is the clear part of the harps. Okay. It smells absolutely delicious. It smells like grain. It smells like toasted barley with a little bit of hint of the, uh, the almost like... Not only say chocolate, but the darkness and the roastedness of the malts used in Guinness. It's like coffee notes. I mean, I can only imagine it's so good. You can use Guinness for many things. I prefer the can, honestly, with still that little nitro uh, capsule in there. These bottles kind of went away with it, though they are claimed to be the same. To me, they're a little bit different, right? Obviously, the draft is the number one thing, and it tastes the best. So let's go ahead and get in here now. All 
All right, so what you're going to what you're expecting is or at least what I get what I'm getting is that first of all the Guinness gets cut a little bit, right? With the with the thinner lager. It cuts the Guinness a little bit and lowers that full bodiness. Also, Guinness has this smooth, creamy, uh, not as crisp flavor. And this lager here, because it is a little bit of the opposite, it's almost like the yin and yang, right? The complete opposite. It, it, it adds a little crispness to the, to the Guinness. Um, you still get those roasted notes. You get those, uh, those smooth qualities with a little crisp to it. This uh, Harps Lager is actually bringing a little bit of bitterness that comes in about mid-range. Because what you're doing is, when you're pouring it like this, you're getting some of the, the Harps from the bottom and the Guinness from the top, right? And they kind of meet in a little small triangle right here. Where you kind of just blend them. I gotta say, it's really, really good. It's a good way if you're not a big fan of just straight Guinness, but you like the flavor. But maybe you don't like that feeling of being full. This is a good way to kind of cut that. That way you still get the Guinness flavor. You you, you cut it with a little uh, light lager or some in this case some type of uh, Harps Premium Lager crispness to give it that, um, that drinkability maybe that it didn't have for you. It's sweet. That lager is bringing that sweetness, that cleanness. It's not lingering. The Guinness typically lingers. It's not lingering as much. And the the, the little bit more carbonation is kind of just just adding that little uh, the thinner thinner thin thinning the actual Guinness, which is giving it that drinkability. Um, I like it. I'm a big fan of Guinness on its own, and. I'm a fan of harps on its own, but together they just have this this taste that is that it's almost uh, uh, the it's almost like like you know what that saying with you know you know uh, hitting a bird with no hitting two birds with one stone kind of like that you're kind of you're hitting both parts of that flavor spectrum and that uh, drink drinkable drinkabilityness and doing it at the same time. It's, it's kind of hard to explain, but I recommend you go ahead and try it. Yeah, I mean, it just, it's just, it's like two things are happening at once. Anyway, go ahead and look for it. Go ahead and try it. Mix it however you want to mix it. Share it with whatever, whoever you want to share it. Thank you for watching, subscribing, and liking. And with that said, the Brew Dude is out.